In this video, Angelica Bennett and Michelle Connect will be covering Miller's information processing theory. George A. Miller is considered to be one of the founders of the field of cognitive psychology. His experiment showed that the human mind could be observed and tested in a lab. With Jerome Bruner, he founded the Center for Cognitive Studies at Harvard in 1960. His theory is comprised of two ideas, chunking and tote. We will cover these in more depth on the next slide. Miller first presented the idea of chunking in his paper, The Magical Number 7, Plus or Minus 2. When looking through various cognitive experiments, he observed there was a short-term memory capacity, which he found to be 5 to 9 chunks of information, or 7 plus or minus 2. Chunks could be any meaningful unit, such as numbers, words, faces, sequences, and even telephone numbers. A lot of people refer to his work when discussing the fact that telephone numbers have seven digits. Let's try one of the experiments from Miller's paper. On the next slide, a group of dots will flash on the screen. You will then be asked to report how many dots there were. How many dots did you see? Let's try again with one more slide. How many dots did you see this time? When they ran the same experiment in 1949, Kaufman, Lord, Reese, and Volkman found that greater than seven dots led to estimation. Was that your experience? The first screen had six dots, whereas the second screen had 10. Seven was found to be the breaking point for short-term memory capacity. So the second part of Miller's information theory is called TOTE, which stands for test, operate, test, and exit. So the example given in the book is hammering in a nail. So in this example, um, you would insert the nail, hammer, and um, see where the nail is. And if you need to hammer more, then you would hammer more. And then you would stop when the nail is flush with the surface. And this is a very simple example, but the idea is that you would stop once that goal is achieved. And this is often also part of a hierarchy. So once you have, for example, the nail holding one board into another, um, that's part of a hierarchy where maybe you're building a tree house or you're building a birdhouse. And we'll go over some practical applications of Miller's information theory. So the first is um, to use short form online learning modules. There was a study from Illinois Wesleyan University that found that when comparing a long form learning module with the same information that was chunked into four separate learning modules, it was found that chunking led to increased completion rates and a significant increase in the pre and post test scores. And also micro learning. So this is just learning in short segments and this could be through videos, visuals, podcasts, or short assignments. <clears throat> and this is just um, presenting the contents in smaller bits um, to keep the students engaged. And totes is something that is probably used in a lot of STEM classes. In our last module where we did the exercise in HTML, that's actually a perfect example of totes, where if you were learning HTML coding and you entered some code, for example, and then saved to see what it would look like as a, view, as a web page. Um, you could see what it looks like. If that's not what you intended, then you could go back, adjust the code, save it, and then view it again, and then stop once your goal is achieved or you um, have the correct code. So for planning, I suspect a lot of you that are classroom teachers right now, you probably are already incorporating these things into your planning. So you're probably already introducing information into smaller chunks, into um, shorter activities, for example. And with the tote, um, I'll just give an example. Um, I was never a classroom teacher, but I was an elementary school librarian for a couple of years, and I wanted the students to be able to search in our online library catalog and find a book from the shelf. And so I would give them these laminated strips that would have, for example, <clears throat> a book title or a book author. 
and asked them to find whatever was on their strip. And so once they either found the book and brought it to me or um, let me know where the book should be on the shelf, um, then they accomplished what they needed. And just like with the example with the hammer and the nail, um, this is part of a hierarchy because, of course, finding a book from a catalog is a very basic um, part of information literacy, and there are lots of steps after that. So we would like to encourage you all to, in the discussion, um, add any other ways that you might use Miller's information theory in the classroom. So maybe some things that you've already done or any ideas that you have from what you've learned about it so far.